Hi guys. Maybe this morning it will stay on. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done and what you're about to do. Um, I thank you for just being God and being you in our lives. And I pray that this sermon helps someone today, whoever is watching and listening, God. I thank you and I praise you in advance for the lives that will change uh, through this thing. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. As many of you know, I love to read. Um, I'm, I read sometimes two or three books a week. Lately, when I when I say read, I mean I mean listen. Um, I love audiobooks. Um, main reason being I can't read regular books, so I I read audiobooks. And this week I read um, the the Will Smith biography, and I read the second of uh, the Nora Roberts a uh, Nora Roberts trilogy called The Coming. The first was called The Awakening. The second was called Becoming. It came out this week. And if you go to my Rachel's Reads page which is a little group that I've started. Um, just type in Rachel's Reads on Facebook, you'll see it. It's where I, um, it's where I put all my, uh, all the books I'm reading. Some are better than others. Uh, some are really great, some are just okay. Um, but I put all the books I'm reading and just so you can see what I'm reading and and enjoy them too. And it's a small group so far, only eight people. But if you want to join, anyone can join. Just type in Rachel's Reads on Facebook and you'll find it. Anyway, so I read... Um, the Will Smith biography and um, Becoming, uh, which is a Nora Robert, a Nora Robert book, and um, I was kind of leery about reading it because I don't like reading fantasy books and stuff like that. But when I read The Awakening, something about it just wrote drew me in. So, um, what the, what the, what the awakening is really about is, um, a girl, she's a teacher, um, her name is Bryn, and um, she's living this ordinary life and very uh, ordinary, like, brown hair and whatever. And she hates teaching. And she's in debt because of her student loans. And she basically is a happy person. But she basically is living a mediocre life. And... Like, one day, she meets the, this guy at a bus stop, and, and it starts her off on an adventure, and this is a fantasy, this is a fantasy book, um, and it turns out that her father, which she thought, um, he just didn't come back one day and she thought he didn't care about him. But what happened is uh, 
her father was a leader in another world. And um, it turned out that her father had some uh, magic powers that that she didn't know about and the and the way that she thought about it is um she she found a bank statement to a bank in ireland which housed millions of dollars and that millions of dollars led her to ireland to find out about her father because her mother really just um, because of fear, her mother just kept her down and, and insisted that she hide uh, her hair color, that she dress kind of um, dowdy-like and in dark clothes and really nondescript. And then there's a whole other world that that she is a part of and she didn't know um and and the only person she had was her friend called called marco and uh marco was was her best friend and like so they 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 go on this journey she goes on this journey first and at the end of the first book um a portal opens up to this new world that she's been going to uh, on and off and her friend marco decides to jump in to this new world and the becoming continues so anyway she she has all these powers but now she has to train um, to use them right so now she's training to use them and and all of that and it reading this book although mysticism is totally not my thing it's totally uh demonic but but the oh just just the the way that the lord revealed himself to me through the through this book was awesome and this character so i thought maybe i would talk about um what the lord revealed to me through this book um, through, through the series of books, even the titles. Um, the Awakening is the first book. Becoming is the second book. Uh, um, and Choice, I think, would be the first book. So, when I look at the character of Breen, like, she's an ordinary girl. She, she... Um, goes to work at a job she hates. She hides her real hair color, her real flaming red hair color, under this brown hair hair color, and she just um, is happy not being noticed. And I I begin to think about how how many people. Uh, live above what live sorry live below who they really are because that, that's what people have told them that what they what they think they deserve and so they they hide away um, just like not really making waves or not really knowing the greatness that's inside of them, the power that God placed inside of them. They're just happy living below standard, like living sub, substandard life. 
And God is calling us to awaken to who we really are as people and as the church. Um, I think the Lord has so much more than we could ever dream of if we would just hear him and awaken to what he has planned for us. If we if we would just listen and just attune ourselves to his word and his spirit, his power that he's placed inside of us would be so incredible. We could do much more than we could ever dream. So first, um, the Lord says, awaken. In Proverbs, it says, awake from your sleep, you sluggard. Uh, he and the Lord is saying, "You've been sluggish for too long. You have ideas. You have purpose. You have a destiny that that you that you that you've known and you've been, that you have had glimpses of, but you haven't haven't touched it yet because you're too afraid. You're too afraid, and you're." You're too afraid that people won't like you if you if you come out of your me, media mediocrity living and just if you come out of living in mediocrity to the way that God wants you to live, it's going to be beyond your wildest dreams, and it it may not be materially. Like, I'm not, you have to think past materially when I, when I talk about uh, mediocrity. I mean, like, Breed had, she had debt, yes, but she had a job and she was doing okay. But she was hiding behind her, her, her brown hair and dark clothes and she was a fiery redhead. And from her father, she had powers that she didn't even know of. So she had to awaken to those powers. And and as children of God, we have to live brightly. And, and we have to just shine for Christ. And a lot of us are not are not shining. We go to church and we sit in these pews, but we're not, we're not on fire. Like, it's just, like, we go to church, we have a good time, and we sit in our, um, little groups, or we, we may have a little Bible study group for friends, but we're living far below the standards and the Lord says I need you to awaken I need you to awaken see beyond what you see see beyond what they say and see to who I am because I am a big God I have placed in you big things and I need you to understand that that those who are against you are far less than than the spirit of God in you. Like we often we often quote the scripture, "If God be for me, who can be against me?" Well, no one can if you if you if you believe that. And that scripture's open, open ended, because we expect the answer to be no one. But in reality, we say, "Who can be against me?" Well, my teacher, or or my boss, or my financial situation could be against me. But in real, and we let that stop us. The Lord has so much more. Then we are constant. Then we are seeing right now 
he has so much for for the church. He has so much more for the world. He has so much more than than what we could ever ask for, and more than we ask, think, or imagine. According to his power working in us. But we haven't harnessed that power. We're hiding the power of God in us because we're too afraid. I was speaking to to God about this last night. Um, and I said, I said, I said, we missed the point of the pandemic. We were so, um, into, uh, well, we need to go back to church again, we need to go back to church again, that we missed the opportunity to just do new things that we never ha have done before. Like, like, I see, like, we, I see so many things that I couldn't tell tell you all of them but it's just we need to think beyond how how we ever thought before and it's just like when I say we mean meaning I mean people and the church we need to awaken to the power that our father has placed in us like brings father Ian uh, because of who he was placed in her power our father placed in us power that we need to harness and ex and release we need to awaken to it we need to know that it's there and know that it's ours see because at the beginning Bryn was just so unsure. She was like, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? And then just now, she's beginning to come into her own. But the same thing with us. We're like, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? And the, and the thing is, you can't. It's the Lord's power that does it through you. You can't do anything but with the power that your Father has given you, the power that you were born with when you went down in the water and t took on the name of Christ and was dead to sin and rose again, that same resurrection power is in you. And everything that God can, God can do, to a lesser extent, you can do. The Lord spoke things into being, you speak things into being. The Lord performed miracles, you, to a certain extent, you can perform miracles. You, like, we, we have not even tapped into the power that God has given us. And, and he wants us to desperately. He wants us to show the world some things that they've never seen. He wants us to show kindness that they've never seen. He wants us to show all these things that they have never them all these things that they've never seen. There are ideas in the church that need to be birthed. There are new ways of doing doing worship that need to be birthed. There are new ways of doing sermons that need to arise. But we need to let go of our mindset. We need to let go of this is the way the church is. And I'm telling you, half the stuff we do in, in the church, God... The Lord didn't come up with it. We did. And we think this is how it needs to be. But the Lord says we need to be open to what he has planned. Because what he has planned and how he's going to do things, it is totally different 
than what we think. Totally different than what we know. And we need to be, we as a church, and we personally need to be ready for what whatever the Lord wants to do, because whatever he wants to do is good. And the next book that I'm in the middle of now for the, for this series is The Becoming which after you awaken to what the Lord has planned for you is now you have to become it. So in the first book, uh, Bryn was figuring out who she was, and who her father was, and um, what this strange world was and what she could do. In the second book, she had to become who she was. She needed to stop being the teacher with with dull clothes and brown hair and be um and be a part of her father's world and embrace her red hair and her uniqueness and she had to get training uh to properly um properly take her rightful place as the daughter of the fallen leader. And this makes me think about um, how, how the Word of God is training for once we've awakened to who we really are in Christ, now we have to get training to understand and to take our place of who we are in Christ. So, and the way we do that is through the Word of God. And I believe the Word of God is twofold. First, there is the written word, the Bible, that is the foundation of of everything because the Bible is about real people um, doing real things. They lived in a different time, but they're still real people um, doing real things and God working real miracles. So that's what the Bible gives us. The Bible is kind of like from the people who lived before Here's a training guide. Guide. It's not. It's not basic instructions before leaving Earth. There's nothing basic about the Bible. It's more of of a training manual of how to how to live life. And and it's very sad to me that people only open their Bible on Sunday, and I've been guilty of this, and because it is, it is just we have not been trained about how important it is to know the written word as a foundation, and the written word goes into the spoken word. You cannot hear God without first um, reading what, what people have written, what he inspired, what is called the, the God-breathed Word of God. After you've, you've read that, then you can get to the spoken word. Um, I was thinking how how instead of getting how we need to get children into reading the Word of God and not like those those uh, patty cake scriptures that we that we uh, teach children but we need to teach them uh, tools and and we need to get them armed for what they're facing out there. Gentle, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, is not going to stop them from committing suicide. 
they need to be armed with the word of God. And I was thinking that um, the time to start with your children, I don't have children, but I was a child, and I wish to God my parents had started with me young, not just not just saying recycled prayers, but teaching me how to read the Word of God and how to how to hear God's voice. I didn't know about even reading the Word of God until until um, for myself until I was in my twenties. Well, I heard about worship and we had devotion, but I didn't know for myself about reading and training to read the Word of God and to fight with the using the Word as a sword. If I had, things would have gone a lot easier for me. So I think we need to start training children how to not just not just memorize the scriptures but make the scriptures their own and and when they make the scriptures their own they'll begin to hear the voice of god and the voice of god will get them through anything it's more than the voice of their parents it's more than the voice of the teachers the the voice of the holy spirit Spirit will guide them into all truth. And I think we need to start from four. And if your and if your children could could memorize um, a Dua Lipa song or whatever song from a Halsey song from the radio, they could definitely memorize the word of God. And after the written word, it's the spoken word of God. It's the word that you hear in your head. And and when you when you develop a rhythm, what I call it, a rhythm with God, you will understand how He speaks to you. So the word of God is the foundation but i would argue equally as important is the spoken word of god where he will t his spirit will tell you um go over there and encourage that person or call your family member just to see how they're doing or do something like that because you'll be God wants you to be so in tune with him that he it becomes second nature it becomes second nature and and now for me I'm not always I'm not always good at this my God we're all all of working in progress but now I'm getting better at not only hearing hearing the word um, that he speaks to me but listening to it and that's all a part of becoming who God wants us to be so first I awaken and now I'm becoming I awaken to who God is and now I'm becoming uh, more of who he wants me to be through training. And worship is another thing, is another source of training. Worship allows you to just give back to God what he's given you. Because um, it said, in Genesis it said, uh, God breathed into man and man became a living soul. So worship is giving back to God what he deserves, which is your breath. 
Not your music, not your songs. I oh I oh I said this a few weeks ago. Um songs are just a vehicle. They're not worship. What worship really is is your life is worship. Your life is worship. And Real worship is he wants your breath. He wants the breath that he gave to you back to come back to him. And your tie, your tie is worship. Your your time is worship. All of those things are ascribing worth to him. That's what worship is. It's ascribing worth to him. It's telling him how beautiful he is. It's telling him how wonderful he is. It's telling, it's saying to your life how gracious he is. And it's more than Sunday morning. Worship has to first be intimate, and then it could be public. Um, because you, uh, like the spirit, like the natural, you can't create anything in public. In public, you can't create anything because you have all your clothes on and you're looking good. But in private, in worship, you you strip off all your clothes, strip off all your confidence, just strip it down to the very, when I say confidence, I mean false confidence. Um, you, sh you strip it down to the very bones and let God see who you are. And in that time, he can put himself in you and create something new, create new li life. Um, usually, songs don't come to me. This is just me. Usually, when I write a song, because I'm a songwriter too, so usually when I write songs, it it comes to me in in private. In my in my private time, in my thinking time, usually that's how sermons come to me as well. So that is a part of my become my becoming to uh, worship the word. And prayer is part of my becoming. Prayer is just communication with God. And prayer is all kinds of communication. Uh, like you, you have all these books on how to pray and whatever, but really, all God wants is to hear you. He doesn't want to hear like people from the 17th century. If you talk like that in your real life, go ahead. But He just wants to hear you. He just wants to uh, be with you. He just want. He just wants you. He just wants you, and he just wants you to know how beautiful you are. And as I said in closing, I was also reading the Will Smith biography, and there was this weird part. I won't even say the whole part because it was really weird and kind of. I'm not going to say it here, but the one thing I got. Out of that part, which I will say here and show here, was because he said I was I was working and working for all this. I had all this stuff. I had number one selling movies. I had I had what seemed to be the perfect marriage. I had a number one music career. He said. But I didn't know that all that stuff didn't matter. I didn't know 
that I was beautiful enough. He's like, he's like, I found out that I was beautiful as me. And the Lord wants me to say that you don't have to achieve, 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 achieve to be someone. That's the world's opinion, but God's opinion is you are beautiful the way you are. He's created you and he doesn't, God doesn't create message. He wants you to know through me today that you are beautiful just the way you are. So let's recap. Um, first, you have to awaken to who you are and who he is. And then you, you become uh, who he wants you to be. And the third book in this series that is not out yet is called The Choice. Um, because it's not out yet, I don't know what it is about, but the Lord wants you to make a choice for him today. Ch choose not only to receive him as your Lord and Savior, but choose to live boldly for him. A lot of people make the first choice and they think that's it but now you have to choose to live boldly and to live boldly it is not like going around and beating people over the head with their bible with your bible and judging people living bold, boldly is first internal knowing and settling in yourself that you are loved and being bold for the king, kingdom, loving boldly, um, being gracious boldly, uh, just living your daily life with boldness and the confidence that no matter who says what on social media, no matter who says what on your job, in school, or whatever. You are loved. You are cared for. You are just the most unique person ever. The, the God of the universe created you, made sure the right sperm and the right egg got together to create you with all your gifts. All your attributes, your hair color, your eye color, your gender. He's created you beautiful. He's created you just the way you are. And he loves you just the way you are. Thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Bye. I wanna see your face. There's no little thing that I will change because you're amazing. Just the way you are. I love you smile. The whole world stops and stares for a while because you're amazing. Just the way you are When I see your face There's not a thing that I would change Because you're amazing Just the way you are And when you smile the whole world stops and stares for a while Because you're amazing Just the way you are The, the Lord wants you to know that Today
And he also wants. And he also wants you to know. You are loved. You are loved by someone. Touched by someone. Held by someone. Need something to someone. Love somebody. You have touched my heart along the way. Please don't worry to say. You are not. Sorry. He said, Don't be afraid to say you are not. He, he wants you to know that you are loved by him today. And that he. He also wants to say, When the rain. Your face and the whole world is on your case. I cannot, I can offer you a warm embrace to make you feel my love. When the evening shadows and the stars appear, and there's no one to dry your tears. I can hold you for a million years to make you feel my love. And in case you're considering inviting him into your life, he'll say to you, I know you haven't made your mind up yet, but I would never do you wrong. I've known it from the moment that we met. There's been no doubt in my mind where you belong. Because although Everyone may not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's met them because he's created them. They just don't. They just don't know that he's created them, and he wants you to know him, and he wants to know you. He already knows you, but he wants you to have a relationship with him. So he can share his secrets with you. He loves you more than anything ever. He loves you more than life. And it is the best thing ever. So what I always say to people is. Just pour out your heart to him. Tell him that you need him. Tell him to. To fill your life. Tell him in your own words to. To take over. However you say it. Just tell him what's in your heart. What's in your mind. And if you need help. I'm here. So just message me here. Or, or I'm on Twitter. At, at Hot for Jesus 7. I'm on Instagram. At. At. As. At Fat Flats Fan 33. And I'm here as Rachel. So message me on any one of those places if if you need help after you just pour out your heart and your life. It's the best relationship you, you will ever be in. Before you get into relationship with a man or a woman, get in relationship with Christ because the relationship with Christ will show you who you really are will teach you who he really is I'll be praying for you have a wonderful day you guys bye
Can't you feel my love? Yes. God saying today, Can't you feel my love? Come on and feel my love. Come on and take this love. Thank you guys. Bye.